Well, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon, wherever you are at this time of day in the world. Thanks for joining me today. I am going to continue my quest to learn React. And, you know, actually, today I was kind of on the fence. Like, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to do React or so I'm I have some work to do on Prism. I'm falling a little bit behind. I got some some feature requests. Now I was thinking about actually trying to implement some of those uh, feature requests for Prism. But uh I don't know, you know, I I'm, I'm always all over the place. Like I'm doing one thing, I'm doing the other, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Maybe I should just focus on React and just keep trying to learn that. I don't know. What do you all think? Do you think I should keep learning React today? Or take a break from learning React since we hit that on Tuesday and uh, try to implement some features in Prism? Maybe I, I, is there a poll? Is there like a poll in Twitch that lets me like ask those types? Those, that would be kind of cool. I should research that. Well, I'm not seeing any responses whatsoever. Oh, Entity Adam, I will always vote for C-Sharp. <laughs> oh, I, I, I gotta feel the same kind of way. Uh, well, what kind of features? Well, you know what? Let's, uh, let's look. And then we could decide. Uh, where is my, my Edgium? Isn't that what they're calling it? The Chromium version of Edge, Edgium? So if we go to our issues here, uh, we have we only have 14 open issues. Some of these we can't do anything about. Actually, one, two, three, four, five of these were blocked by Xamarin. Oh, six. Six of them we are blocked by Xamarin. It's a bug in Xamarin. And we can't do anything about it. Uh, but we have some, you know what? I kind of feel like some, if, if I work on this today, I kind of feel like some WPF, actually. Uh, so let's filter by WPF. Into the Atom. Edgium randomly gets a new icon when I log. Yeah, it does have a new icon. I noticed that too. I noticed that too. I have a new icon for my Edgium. Oh uh, yeah, so if we're looking at WPF, uh, we could see an enhancement here. Let's just read these. Let me just open them all up and maybe we can pick pick which one we, we want to do. Uh, journal still stores the current entry, even if persist in history returns false. Okay, so essentially what this is, is in Prism to, for WPF, you know, it has this navigation service. Well, it also has a navigation journal. We can go back, you can go forward, you can check, can go forward, can go back, all this great stuff. And the, the Prism community actually submitted a, a feature, which was merged, which allows a view to opt out of that navigation history, right? Don't track this view in history. So if I'm on, if I'm on view A, I navigate to view B and I tell view B, I don't want you in this history. Then I navigate to view C. Well, if I hit the back button, I should go to view A, right? Because view B said, don't add me. Uh, however, it looks like the, there's a property called current entry and that, uh, that is not being cleared out. So that's one thing we can look at. Uh, that would actually should be pretty simple to do. I uh, basically just set it to null. I mean, that should be really easy. Or uh, automatic injection of named views. So there is a running issue with, uh, with Prism and how it works with containers. Oh. oh, Entity Atom. Is that journal a memento pattern? Uh, I don't know if I've heard that term. What is a memento pattern? Uh, okay, so no, this is not like a rollback. This is, this is more like how you navigate in your web browser, right? You see these forward and back buttons? Right? So essentially, Prism just keeps a log or a journal of everywhere you navigated to, and you can navigate front and back. And because it's WPF, 
you don't have to worry about managing state separately. The view remains in memory and maintains its own state. So that's what that is. Uh, now this other one is the automatic injection of name view. So there's an issue with Prism and using named views. Uh, it's a little hard to explain. I mean, you can see this is a very well written uh, issue. But the problem really comes down to if you're using a custom name for your views, they'll be created and all that great stuff, but none of the interfaces to stuff will work properly. I think, I think it's the, uh, I think it's on the, uh, is navigation target implementation. So that's something that gets in the weeds. Like this is in the weeds of things for sure. Uh, Entity Adam, gotcha. I've been uh, discussing design patterns. So I'm on that lookout for examples of them. Oh, well, Prism has tons of, <laughs> of design patterns in them. Tons of them. Uh, but Momento is not one of them. So this is pretty simple. And there's actually a pull request for this already. However, uh, so this is basically saying... Prism should use the XAML behaviors for WPF NuGet package now and get away from the system.windows.interactivity DLL that we have to ship with it. I would love to do this, but this is definitely a breaking change. Big time. It will break everyone's app out there because the namespace for the WPF XAML behaviors changed. So if you're using interactivity in your WPF apps, this is a huge break for everybody. Okay. And like I said, there's, there's always already a pull request. I have do not merge on it yet because I'm not ready for it. Uh, but we have a pull request for that. And we also have multiple dialogue windows. So Prism has a dialogue service, which for now only supports one dialogue window type. So if I show a dialogue, it's always going to show in the same dialogue window. You can't like say, oh, this is a, a ribbon window and this is a uh, message box window and this is a notification window. And you can't control what the host window would be uh, for your dialogue. So this might be kind of fun to do as well. Uh, it could get a little complex, but totally doable. So we could do any of that or we can continue along the React path. So... I don't know. I don't know. What am I feeling like? I don't know what I'm feeling like. What am I feeling like? Let's see. Getting started with React. Uh, I gotta go React.js. Uh, you know what? Let's just, I'm gonna still, I'm gonna stay on, I'm gonna stay on React. I'm gonna stay on React. Let's just do that. Oh, because I'm still trying to learn this. And that little, on Tuesday, I wrote that little tic-tac-toe game. It didn't really drive home the concepts like it said it would, right? All right. So, where's my file explorer here? Whoops. All right. So, I'm going to just open up my command in here. Remember that little trick? Go to your... Uh, file explorer just type cmd in there and it's going to pop up your command prompt right in that directory for you okay now i'm trying to i don't even remember the the syntax so hello world read this guide introduce it yeah i don't care about that okay let's just go here just okay blah 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 I forgot how to even create. What was it? Was it in? I forgot how to create. I think it was like. In NGX. Create react app. Is that it? Uh, demo react. Let's find out. Nope, that's not it. Okay. Uh, you would think it would tell you here. But it's not. Okay, maybe installation. Add, oh, right here. Create a new React app. 
You use create react app. In PX. Oh, I was so close. I was so close. In P that's it. Steven89. That's how new I am to this. Steven89, thanks for the follow, my friend. Okay, so let's create this. We'll call it Demo React. And yeah, I did that walkthrough on Tuesday about creating that tic-tac-toe game. But I didn't... I didn't really get it a lot. Only because they stubbed so much code out for me and didn't really explain a lot of what was going on. Dot Kami! I see you there. I see you with the follow and I appreciate it. Man, this is still going. You know, one thing I'm... So coming from the desktop, I have to say, so my React app, I freaked out at this. I freaked out. Look at that. So coming from the desktop, I mean, we can be pretty picky about what we add to our projects, right? Like we don't want to add anything unless it absolutely has to be there. No assembly references, no new, like we have to know exactly what's there. And we, we complain, we complain about the smallest kilobyte increase in assembly size. And this is desktop. We have access to the entire machine and all the process. We could do anything we wanted. And we're like, I don't know, man, that's, that's a megabyte bigger. I, is that dependency needed? And then I come to the web. Cubite 7, thanks for the follow. I come to the web. I'm learning this web. A file new gives me 117 megabytes of I don't know what. Like, I go into node modules. I have no idea what this is, what it does, what it depends on, if there's any kind of malicious scripts in here. I, I don't know. I don't know what any of this stuff does. This freaks me out. I really don't know how web devs just love this environment. Coder, yes, web front end programming is a disaster. That is, that's scary. Scary, scary, scary stuff. Okay, so our app is done here. And actually, let me do this where I put that back over the side. And then here, okay. Well, not like that. Oh, not like that. There we go. Steven and I, I'm a front end dev. It's just a bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, CD. What did I call that? Dang it. I got to remember the name of these things. I think I call it Demo React. Yep. And then I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code because I do not like writing in Notepad. I know you web devs. You guys love Notepad. <laughs> Uh, Entity Adam and JS World, there is no BCL. Yep, everything is packaged. Coder, that's why I don't do it. I stopped doing it once it went beyond basic HTML and JavaScript. It's like 18 years ago. No kidding. Do you guys remember, like, so I did web way back in the simple days when it was just HTML and JavaScript and CSS. SAS wasn't around. Less wasn't around. None of that crazy stuff. And I remember when Ajax was the big thing. Like, that was cool. Ajax was like, holy cow, this is awesome. Uh, yeah, it's crazy now. 1K Griff? Kevin, is that you, my friend? Is that you? I don't know many Kevin Griffins out there. I think, th oh, good to see you, my friend. It's been a while. Entity Adam. Yes, Adobe Dreamweaver was cool. I loved Adobe, Adobe Dreamweaver. I even wrote extensions for it. I wrote extensions for Dreamweaver, and they were popular ones, too. Anyways, let's get back into this. Okay. I don't know what any... See, it doesn't explain any of this stuff. Any of this stuff. What is this stuff? Okay, I'm going to delete everything in here. Nope, wait. Take that back. I'm going to delete that. This, this. This, this. I'm going to keep my index... Because this worked last time. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of this. Because I don't know about it yet. If I don't know it, it's not going in there. 
Okay. Now. Minimize that. Hey, what happened to... What the... Hey! Oh, there we go. Did you see that? I lost my heading. Okay. Let's learn this crazy React stuff. Okay, hello world. This is where we were at. So I remember this React DOM.render and basically... It looks like we could just say, put our HTML right in here. But we didn't do this in our sample because we had a, uh, a tic-tac-toe game, right? Oh, I always do that. Uh, NPM start. Lily Hazel, good morning. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. All right. Basic stuff. I understand how that works. I totally get it. Uh, so I remember... Huh, Lily's lurking. I understand. I, I lurk. Sometimes I'll be working and lurking, right? That's what we do. Uh, okay, so last time we actually had a function, right? We created a function and we called it like, uh, I don't know, app. Right, and then it would return. Uh, let me copy this out. I think we did this. And this is what we did. And then here we would say app. Right, we did that. And then it still works. So I, I remember that part. I remember that part. Uh, that's pretty basic. I remember we had some uh, some comments about hooks to where you don't have to use the base class. I remember that, but we'll, we'll get to that. So, see, they don't explain. I wish they would just explain. I kind of understand what this does, okay? So, React DOM, render, and then we tell it what to render is going to call this function. And another thing, fuel stable, yeah. Hooks is the new hotness. So I've heard. Could someone answer this question for me? What I have here, is this a client side application or a server side? I have no idea because there's no, like I didn't create, like in Blazor, I create a client side Blazor app. I create a server side Razor app, right? Uh, Kevin Griffin, okay, so this is a client. Got it. Maybe they'll. Maybe I'll get into the uh, server side later. Is that just a setting? Like, is there a setting to change it to server side, or is it like a different project template structure that I have to use? Like right now, I just did the create React app. Is it like a setting I can go into like my package or something, and just I'm a I'm a server now, huh? Use control plus U to check the source. Okay. So I understand what this does. We're rendering, we call this function and uh, it's gonna render out whatever we told it to return. Now this could be, this could be a component, an actual class, or it could be a function like we have here, which returns HTML. Uh, now Coder, you said you don't like seeing HTML inside JavaScript. However, I think that's what React is 100%. It's HTML inside JavaScript. That's React. And uh, yeah. Okay, so how to read this guide? Yeah, I don't, I don't need instructions there. I'll just skim. We're skimmers. Yeah, I know React is a JavaScript library. There's so many out there. Okay, let's get started. Next chapter, JSX. Okay, I kind of get JSX. Got to get that. Yep. Template language. Totally get it. Yep. Embedding expressions. We did that in that game. The tic-tac-toe game. Oh, so it doesn't even have to be a function. It could be a anything that returns HTML. Right there. Okay. Yeah, that's very similar to... Uh, very similar to Angular, actually. Okay, I don't need a... Rendering elements. Unlike browser DOM elements, React elements are plain objects and are cheap to create. React DOM takes care of updating the DOM. 
So is React DOM, is that like a, a shadow copy, like a shadow DOM that we're manipulating? And then React takes what we do there and spits it out into the browser DOM? It's kind of what I feel like. Uh, Coder, I've read a bit of you. Seems the most compatible with my way of thinking if I ever wanted to learn front end. Yeah, okay. Ream 88. Oh, cool. Okay, so this... Everything I do is going against this virtual DOM, the React DOM. And then whatever I do, the React DOM will take that instructions I give it, and then it spits it to the actual browser DOM. Got it. Okay. And yep, that's where this is happening here. React DOM render. That's what we're doing right here. That's what we're doing. Except I have a function. Okay. Yes, and this was something that I needed a little bit of clarification. But yeah, so... React elements are immutable. So once they're created, you can't change them. Very interesting. And then I guess when we were calling set state the other day... Yes, on Tuesday. When we called set state, that would force that render to be called. And it would re-render everything and all the children. I remember that. I remember talking about that. So we had this tick. And that would... Yeah, I can see. There's our function. We're calling tick. And it would uh, call that every second it would re-render. Okay. React only updates what's necessary. What do you mean it only updates what's necessary? I thought it redraws everything that's in the render. Oh, it compares the element and its children to the previous one and only applies the DOM updates necessary to bring the DOM. Okay, so if I'm understanding this correctly, when there's a state change, when there's a change, it's going to take basically a copy Right, it's going to hold on to the previous version of my view. When I call render again, right, I set state or whatever implements, uh, invokes that re-render. It's going to render another instance of my view and it's going to compare those two. And it's only going to update what changed. That's what I'm getting from this. Kevin Griff, pretty much. Ream 88, exactly. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so that makes sense. So, yeah. Because that that is a lot like how Flutter reacts. And I did Flutter a little a little while back. So, that makes sense to me now. I under I understand I understand that part. Okay, components and props. Yeah, so the simplest way to find out components, right? JavaScript function. That's what we did right here, except I didn't pass in props. Right? Can I even take props? Because I didn't pass props in here. Well, hello, chicken, chicken, nine. Chicken, chicken, nine. <laughs> chicken, chicken, nine. That's kind of fun to say. Chicken, chicken, nine. Adrian, how's everyone doing? Thanks for joining. Adrian, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Okay, so components. So we have, we have our uh, our app, and I'm passing in props, but I don't have to call it here. There's nothing to pass in here. Chicka chicka nine. Thank you for the follow, my friend. Chicka chicka nine. Chicka chicka nine. I'm gonna have to have an alert that says chicka chicka nine. Chicka chicka nine. Chicka nine. <laughs> I don't know why that's so fun. So, this is interesting. If I added props here, like they do in this example, how come I don't have to provide an instance of props in that function? Interesting. Must be a JavaScript thing. Okay. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna test something. I'm gonna do a test. Let's do a test. I'm gonna do a function. Uh, 
title. Props. Hey, what do you do that for? I said title. And then I'm going to do this. Oh, wait, not like that. Not like that. I got to do the uh, props dot title. Okay. Wait, what am I doing? Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to try this. And then instead of returning this here, and instead of having props there, Uh, can I do return title? Well, how would I pass the props in there doing that? Huh. I would know how to do it. I know how to do it with a component. I remember that. But if I'm just using functions, how do I set that on there? Shadis1, thank you for the follow. Oh, really? Uh, Rame88 says I need to do this. But that's a fun. That's a function. Oh. Very interesting. So this is treating this function as HTML markup. Oh. Interesting. Let me save that. Oh, whoops, I closed it. Nice. Okay, I did not know it worked that way. I thought if I was using a component class, then I would have to... Uh, that's when I could use it as an HTML element, if you will, right? If it was a, a component class. I thought it was a function. I had to do it that way. But is that saying I can do this? Whoops. So I can do that then. There we go. Check that out. Okay. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. So that could be a fun... Yeah, it is magic. Plugo, that's magic. That's a little too much magic. Now, on the desktop, when you use, like, dependency injection... Some developers don't like using dependency injection because it's too much magic. You don't know what's going on. It's hard to know. It's hard to debug. This is freaking like unicorn magic. This is on a next level magic. Especially this part. Especially just by adding title, it magically adds it to props. That's super duper magic too. Ream88, you can still call it like a function power of this is to extend HTML build your own components. Yes, I, I see that. That's really cool. Okay, so I I already know how to do the class based. We did that on Tuesday. So let's let's see. I want to get into that hook stuff. Oh, I see it. Down. I don't want to skip too much ahead. I see hooks down here. Okay, yep. Got that. Got that. We just figured that out. Figure that out. What's that? Farhad Dev. Farhad Dev one. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for joining. You get to watch me struggle as I learn React. And it's painful. It's painful. Like, I could just imagine. The, like, this is just simple code, too. I can imagine what the code for a full-blown production application would look like. I bet it's pretty hard to read and follow if you're coming new to the code base. Okay, yep. 
Okay. Composing components. Yeah, we did that. I could do that. Right? Let's do this. I'm going to compose some components. Let's compose components, shall we? Hello, Kevin. 388. Plugo. Oh, Plugo. Uh, ooh, can't forget Chicken Chicken Nine. Chicken Chicken Nine, Chicken Chicken Nine. And I need one more. I need one more. How about Adrian? Your name's really long, so I'm just gonna, just gonna leave it that way. Okay. Okay, that's easy. Totally get that. So, Kevin is saying, we've done production apps in Angular, React, and Vue. If I was doing Greenfield today, totally would choose Vue. Man, I've heard so much about Vue. Kevin, what are you doing to me, man? I gotta. I just learned Angular not too long ago. And when I say learned Angular, I mean like the very basics, right? Now I'm trying to learn the basics of React. Now I'm gonna have to learn Vue. Uh, this web stuff is crazy. Web developers are crazy. Okay, extracting components. What angular shit is? <laughs> chicken, chicken nine, what? And Kevin, you haven't hit the points where React fell apart for me. Uh, I can see where this could fall apart very quickly. And I can see, just from my playing around with it on Tuesday and, and today, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no, like, structure, if you will, to it. There's no... I don't see any, like, real patterns to where any app you built will be completely different than the app you built previously, right? And you kind of have to change the way you think about developing your, your web apps in the first place. Like, you really have to think it through. I can see this. Uh, it could be a total mind shift for how you, like, really break things down. But I could totally see coming into a, a React app code base and just being lost because it's not going to be anything close to what you may have experienced in the past because there's no patterns to drive you down a certain path to success, right? Like Angular is a framework. It's kind of all the apps look the same structural wise. The code is structured very similar. So when you go into an Angular code base, it's a little more familiar. But this, I could see this being total just wild wild west www right wild wild west okay so don't be afraid to split components into smaller components yes yes i remember that too i'm not concerned about that so much now i did see where you have nested components how sharing state across all those you kind of had to bring that state up to the parent level and it became a little bit of a pain in the butt Props are read only. Okay. Props are read only, but state is not read only. Okay. React components must act like pure functions with respect to their props. Okay. Got that. State and life cycle. I kinda we kinda went over states, so we may be able to skip this. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of rushing to get to this hooks because I wanna <laughs> I wanna know what hooks are. Okay, so consider the ticking clock example. We call the React. Dot, yeah, React DOM dot render. Yes, that's all we're doing here to change it. It's own timer updates this every second. Okay. Oh, okay. I see how that's working now. That's just doing a little bit of refactoring. It's the same code, works the same. Not concerned about it. I understand that. Now, I don't want to convert a function to a class. Because that's not the hotness. That's not the cool stuff. You know, and I'm looking at this on the right. I'm not seeing anything about navigation. Adding local state. 
I rem we worked with state. I remember state. But we had to defend, uh, define it. Excuse me. Yes. So that's where hooks going to come in, right? When I get the hooks, if I want to keep using functions, I have to use hooks to set state instead of doing this. Handling events. We did that. This is just like any other web platform. Nothing fancy there. Conditional rendering. Oh, you, okay. I guess you could also do that too, huh? Navigation is not included in React. You can use library like React Router, Kevin said. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me? <laughs> Kevin, and you are here. These are the limitations that you're like, what? Yeah, WTF. WTF. Well, I almost don't want to continue now. Navigation is not built in. You know, another thing I'm not seeing, actually. Is there like, is there like dependency injection? How do I get my data? Is that just basic, boring JavaScript stuff I do there? All my HTTP requests and services and all that Azure stuff. And like, I like, I like services. That's what I like. Uh, but view is the same way. You have view router. The view CLI does include it in the basic project. Oh, okay, so let's... I'm going to do some... I'm going to play around here. So we'll say app. Uh, okay, app. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm logged in. Kevin, this conditional rendering is horrible in my opinion. Really? Yeah, it would be nice to have a different approach. I like Angular's uh, ng template. I love that thing. So now I could say props, right? Uh, if props dot is logged in. Right? Than this. Or do I have to return? I want to do that. What? Did I miss something? In React, you're writing multiple versions of the component. Oh, my God. Yeah, I do like Angular NG if. Uh, this is weird. Can I not do this? And I can't do an if else statement like this. Don't tell me that's. That your line 12 through 16 are not inside a div. I want to keep them inside this div. You see that? I want to keep them all inside that one div. It can only return one out. Oh my gosh. So I have to do this. I got to do that. That's what you're telling me. Uh, what's it? Shift Alt F? Nope, that's not it. I thought it was Shift Alt F. Yeah, there we go. What the heck? Oh, like that? I got to wrap my if block? Oh my god, this sucks. Like, no joke.
Wait, line... Like this? No. You know what? Hold on. I'm getting rid of that. I don't want an else. I just want to get this one if to work. Just this one if. The get get. Hello. It's easier to do if outside of the return. But I don't want to do it inside outside the return. I want to do it in here. So do I have to do this? How do I? I just want to wrap one if statement. That's all I want to do. Oh my gosh! I'm looking at these comments! I'm freaking out! Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm doing... Props. Don't tell me this is what I have to do. Yeah, Kevin, Rack doesn't care what you want to do. Ugh. Okay. Uh, what was it? I'm looking at the comments over here. Some HTML. This. Okay. I lost my line. So many comments. Oh, no way. Really? Well, actually, I might have to keep that. I might have to keep that, actually, huh? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, this is a desktop guy experiencing React for the first time, and uh, I need a bucket because I'm about to vomit all over my desk. Oh, not question mark, but and. No, it's question mark. It's question mark. Because it worked. I have it working. It gets worse. Kevin, it gets worse. So if I change this to false. Whoops. And then I get all the... Okay. That is... Bad. Like, that's a very basic requirement in any programming language. Anything. Anything you use. A simple if-else. And this is what you have to do for an if? The get get works with uh, prop and oh your HTML. Kevin's like, what if all the names were in an array and you wanted to iterate over the array and spit out a title? Yes, yeah, that's common problem. That's yeah, sick mofo. Yeah, sick mofo. I like that, sick mofo. The if isn't a problem. Your outside div is useless and your specific requirement is doing the if inside the div. Does it matter if I'm in a div? Does it matter? Because what if I want that outside div? Because what if this outside div has some type of class associated with it? Right? Some type of style. And then depending on my result on my if, I'm going to spit out different content which may have its own styling. Right? Like, I don't think that's crazy talk it matters when you're using templating frameworks versus jsx framework oh my gosh okay so <laughs> okay let's move on let's move on from this this oh my god yeah what if i what if i did have an array inside of here what if these were dynamic I haven't seen anything dealing with actual data yet. So, Sigmofo, strictly speaking, this isn't React, but a JSX issue. But you have to use JSX in React. Right? Yeah, I haven't even dealt with data yet. 
Oh, list and keys. You know what? Let's jump to list and keys. Let's deal with this. Oh, here we go. Here's that map you were talking about, sick mofo. Yeah, what do components look like in React? So, Zulex, actually, a component is a class. I learned this. So, class, uh, my new title, right? Uh, inherits. It was a uh, React dot component. No, not inherit. Sorry, implements. Right? Imp no, wait. Crap! I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I think it's inherits, right? <laughs> it's inherits. Extends. Yes, the get get extends. I was close. <laughs> yeah, and then it has a uh, a render method in it. Right? I remember that. And then you return H1 blah. Well, I misspelled blah. You get it, blah. That's a component. Zulex, that's a component right there. Uh, and then, but the new thing is not using components. Well, and then let me take this a little further. And then my new title, I would stick right here like this, right? Uh, let me save that. Okay, I messed something up. <laughs> of course I did. Of course I messed it up. Do I need to wrap that in a... Something like this? <laughs> I'm going to say true. I'm going to say true. Oh, I guess I can... Oh. Oh, I see why. Hold on. I think I'm, I'm kind of figuring this out. No, that wasn't it. No, that was it. That was it. Yeah. Yes, the get get. Yes. You can only return a single element, but it can have children. I Okay, I got it. I got that. But yeah, so that's... Uh, Zulex, that's a component right here. Now, apparently this is not the way to do it anymore. Right? Apparently, it's all... You want to use functions. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm using... See these functions? Function apps... So I'm trying to use functions now instead of class-based components. So SickMofo, you can use react.fragment instead of the div if you don't want to actually create a DOM element for the... Oh. Oh. So, f okay, so react.fragment. And then I'm assuming, is it like Something like this. Uh, wait. No, not like that. Okay, no, it's not code. Oh, Pluto. React dot fragment. Like that. Okay, so now if I make this false. Oh, that's even better. I like that. So this is kind of like ng template then. ng template essentially allows you to, you know, have elements that you're going to add to the DOM, but it doesn't actually, it's not part of the DOM, I guess. If that makes sense. So Zulex, the one thing that I've seen that React has over Vue that I wish Vue had is fragments. Okay. And get get and I'm okay with your opinion. <laughs> All right, so this is not bad. That's cool. I I've learned a lot so far. For one, I've learned how frustrating ifs can be. So, are you telling me there isn't there's got to be like just an if else, right? Okay, let's get I want to play with some uh some data. Okay, let, I'm going to copy and paste this out. Let's play with some data. Because I have a feeling this is where some real pain is going to come in. I'm just going to copy all this. Sick mofo. There's no if else inside JSX. Just here. Ah, that was my problem. There's no if else. Well, that blows. Are there loops? Or like, 
for each or while do while anything like that anything that a desktop dev relies on okay so we have this and then I'm gonna come down to my app where's my app oh there's an app Okay, so let's go. Actually, are there comments? I don't even know if there's comments. Is that a... No, that's not an HTML. Oh, this is an HTML. This is an HTML. I can't do an HTML comment. I should be able to do this. Right? Yeah. And then here... Number list, numbers equals, do an array, right? Oh, no, no, I have a const. We're using a const, uh, which is numbers. Okay, so let's, okay, we have that. And what are we doing here? So we have a number list. We're passing in the props. I'm setting the numbers to the props.numbers. Got it. List items, numbers, map. What the hell is numbers map? Yep, attribute. Are you creating a list of items? We'll discuss why it's important. Oh, I, yeah. <clears throat> what the heck? When you run this code, you'll be given a warning that a key should be provided for... Well, I don't have a warning. Oh, yeah, I do. What's this? Yeah, right there. There's my, there's my warning. There's my warning. Let's assign a key. You have to assign a. Why do you have to assign a key? Why can't I just do this? All right, let's do a key. Somebody please call PETA. That's quite unorthodox. It's the Heisenberg uncertainty principle all in effect. Zombie cats, both alive and dead. Well, and I have to provide the number. I have to do both. Wait, well, let me. Get some space here, some breathing room. Oh yeah, okay, I'm not worried about that. Why do you have to add a key? Keys help React identify which items have changed, are added, or are removed. Keys should be given to elements inside the array to give the elements a stable identity. The best way to pick a key is to use a string that uniquely identifies a list item among its siblings. Most often, you would use IDs from your data as keys. Well, crap. Sick mofo. List items will be an array of... Num okay, yep. If you don't assign a key, React has to re-render. How can React distinguish between the elements? If you swap the order, everything is mixed up. Well, can it just infer... Can I not use the content and auto assign the key? Unless, hold on, unless the content is the same, like they might have two Brian's in your name list, right? So that wouldn't work. Some component data, data one, some component data, data two. If you swap the order, oh, okay. Oh my gosh, this is... Okay, yeah, well, you don't have render item, you may use the item index. Oh, I can use the index. Only do this if items have no stable IDs. So if I have a name list and it's just a list of names and there's a possibility that they could be the same, I would have to use this index. I guess that's a reserved word? Why 
Is that... I'm going to run that. Nope, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Oh, I see why. There we go. So in the case where I had a, a list of names or something and it's possible a name could be duplicate, but I don't have any unique IDs, then I could use the second parameter index. And that must be part of the map, the map function. I really miss F12. I wish I could F12 into definitions. I can't even get a... Uh, can't even get like IntelliSense on what that's supposed to mean. Oh my gosh. This is uh, getting hard to read. <laughs> I'm really missing my C sharp right now. We should have worked on Prism. <laughs> we should have added multiple window dialogue support for the Prism dialog servers instead. Good old C sharp example. <laughs> Lewis Strick, this is the first time I'm seeing React from the inside, and I must say, things don't really make sense to me. You are not the only one, my friend. I'm writing it, and I'm still confused, trying to get the simplest things to work. Luckily, I have a great community helping me through this. Yeah, so uh, SickMofo, React encourages you to not use array indices as keys, but in practice, most of the time, you'll, you'll be fine. Okay. Okay, so let's look here. Extracting components with keys. Keys only make sense in the context of the surrounding array. Yeah, extract a list item. Should keep the key on the list item. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I see what they're doing there. And in the in the case, if I were using the index, I would also set the index and provide that on here. Provide the index on the list item and set the list item key to index here. Okay, that makes sense. I could get that. Correct key usage. Oh, okay. This is what not to do. Sorry. Nix that. Incorrect key usage. Don't do this. Don't. Oh, okay. Don't do that. Got it. <laughs> Correct key usage. This is what you want to do. So you can pass your value to your component, right? Uh, but always keep the key on the component level here. Inside the array. Okay. You know, they didn't really explain. Did I miss where they talked about map? And what map really does? And this is link note that doesn't link anywhere. Okay, they're not talking about map. Let me scroll down some more. Keys must only be among unique among siblings. Okay. Oh, here we go. Map. Here we go. We declared... Variable, okay, yep. JSX allows embedding any expression in curly braces so we could inline the map result. Okay. Uh, map is just ES6 JavaScript. Map filter reduce, etc. Oh, okay, thanks, sick mofo. I like that name, I thought Sick Mofo. I should change mine. Mine's boring. It's just my name. <laughs> it's not Chicka Chicka Nine. You know, it's not something catchy like that. Chicka Chicka Nine. Sick Mofo. Okay, forms. Oh, okay, forms. Yeah, this is important. Forms is important. We have to know how to submit data, right? This looks like a default. Yep, HTML form. This looks familiar. I'm not a, a super good web guy, but I know a form when I see one, and that's a form. How do you spell this name? Which name? Chicka Chicka Nine? <laughs> Dan, thanks for joining. 
I don't know how long you've been sitting there watching me struggle with React, but it's uh it's been a show for sure. No, chicken chicken. Chicken chicken nine. But you say it real fast. Chicken chicken nine. Chicken chicken nine. That's it. I'm making a shirt. Chicken chicken nine. I'm making a shirt. It's going to be two chickens holding the number nine in between them. So two two chickens facing each other holding a nine. Chicken chicken nine. Got it. Shirt on order. Okay, so controlled components. Okay, so... Yeah, input, text area, yep. You would only update with set state. But if I'm not using a component, how would I use set state? Huh, Dan, you obviously spent a lot of time thinking about this. No, I just came up with that right off the top of my head just now. Ah, so see, in this case, we, we have this form, except... It's a component, like a class, I should say, a class. Desktop handle changed. Desktop handle changed. Don't bind this. Uh, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to use. I want to use the cool stuff. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm not feeling React right now, guys. I'm sorry. I know it's new. I know it's change. And people are resistant to change. We, we're all comfortable in our IDEs and our technology. And learning something new can be hard. But this is a lot of typing. <laughs> like, this code is can get kind of hard to read. It's just... Yeah, okay. This way of form. Use text area. The select tag. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm really digging Blazer. Compared to this, shoot. Value selected. Oh, that's kind of neat. Okay. React instead of using the selected attribute uses a value attribute on the root select tag. This is more convenient in a controlled component. Is it? Is it though? Oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna copy this out. Let's replace what I have. No, I'm not gonna replace what I have. I'm just gonna do this. Uh, get rid of this. Flavor form. Coconut. Grapefruit. Okay. Got that working. Now let me look what I just pasted in there. Zulex. I think the biggest thing I can see about React so far is that it seems to do away with the idea of separation concerns. You have your JS and your HTML stuff all together. Yes, and don't forget you'll be throwing CSS in here too, I am sure. Although there is a separate file for CSS, you'll uh, you'll still need to declare those styles on these elements. Uh, in view, you create your HTML stuff, put your JS in a script area, and then use directives to inject the reactive data into the HTML stuff. Yes. Dylan86511, thank you for joining. Thanks for the follow. Is that your, uh, is that the PIN number to your bank? 86511? Your garage code, maybe? <laughs> oh, Kevin's saying you don't have to use JSX, but most people do. Well, all their samples are using JSX, right? I mean, let me go back to this JSX, introducing JSX. Yeah, it embraces the fact that rendering logic is inherently coupled with other UI logic. Right there. Dan, Zulex, right here. It says it. They don't care. It's what they're saying. They are perfectly happy with the fact that your code is so coupled 
that it's going to be impossible to read, hard to maintain. Ugh. I haven't even got to testing yet. I don't even think about how I'm going to test this stuff. Hopefully there's some type of built-in framework to test your JSX stuff, right? Okay, back to forms. Back to forms. Oh, there's a link. React without JSX. Oh, oh, this is the advanced guide. Advanced. So if you want to go advanced, then you could do it without. Oh, it looks like you have to use create element. Oh, wow. No, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, this can't... Sickmofo, are you telling me without JSX, we would have to use react.createElement for every div? For every element in our file, we'd have to code it? Oh my god! No! 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 I quit! I quit! I'm not doing that. I quit. React sucks. I made up my mind. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so you're using JSX. Let's just put it that way. There's if you're doing a React, you are using JSX. <laughs> Zulex. That decides it. I'm sticking to view and I'm never looking at React. <laughs> oh my god. That's brutal. Okay, okay. I copied all this code. Uh you can pass an array to the value attribute, allowing you to select multiple options. Uh, the final input tag. Okay. Type file. It's an uncontrolled component. Oh my gosh. Are you serious? Look at this code. Look at this code. <clears throat> Kevin, rename channel title to Let's Learn View. <laughs> you know what? I might do that next week, actually. Holy cow. This is worse than WinForms with all the amount of code you have to manage and write. I'm not even, I'm just reading this code and I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? And this is just for something simple, like a really simple form. I imagine like a real production like form where you got to gather a lot of data. Line of business application. Nothing customer facing, but like a line of business app. Ugh. <laughs> Kevin Griffin. And people like this. AGR. That's stupid. Why do people use that? I don't know. I mean, granted. Granted, I'm a desktop developer, so my expectations are a little different. And this is coming from my perspective. This is a uh, pretty overwhelming to get started, honestly. And compared to like Angular, I picked up Angular in like a week. That's how easy it was. And it has all the dependency injection. It has all the navigation and handling parameters and all that stuff built right in. All the... That's re uh, the RX extensions for observables for getting all your uh, your HTTP requests and everything like it was just easy. Oh my gosh, forms are easy. Oh man, sick mofo. I've been writing React professionally for over three years, but I know what you're saying. In some respect, it feels like we've gone backwards in how much code you need to get stuff working on the screen. Yeah, Kevin, Angular is complex for a variety of other reasons. Yes. Angular is complex for a variety of other reasons. However, I could be successful in Angular much easier than I, I will be successful in React. For sure. But you have to work your way up to Angular complexity. True. Yeah, like... That's crazy. This is crazy. Okay, I'm skipping that. I 
I think I've basically made up my mind that I probably won't write a React app. It's good that I understand how it works, though, because a lot of people are using it. And as a control vendor, I work for a control vendor in Phrygistics. We have components that work in React. So I have to understand at least the bare minimum to create a quick app, get some data in it, and display it in like our chart, our grids, right? Our editors, things like that. Uh, oh my gosh. This is that if return, else return. Add a second input. Yeah, this is, woo. Zulex, I think if you like Angular, you'll probably like Vue. But in the end, I think any knowledge in different frameworks is good to have. So you wanna use the internet? Yes, I agree. And AGR, now I can, with some degree of education, tell people to stay away from it. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna say stay away from it. That's not fair to react, right? I'm a technologist, right? I'm not hardcore, like only this, only that, only this. I'm open minded. I like to think of myself as open minded and trying new things. I won't tell people to stay away, but I probably will say is if you're coming from desktop, uh, if you used other frameworks like Angular or something, you'll have to completely change the way you think about writing apps. And you'll be writing a ton more code, like straight up. Look at all this code you have to write for the simplest stuff like i'm i'm a little demotivated i if you've noticed i haven't written any code in a while i've just been overwhelmed with these code snippets and this is just basic stuff like basic gosh yeah, if you hate yourself, React is fun. <laughs> Upgrading Dave. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for joining us. Okay. What's this? Composition versus inheritance. Is that the... Uh, what's that? Hima. Hama. Hama. Thanks for the follow. Hey there. No problem. Enjoying the stream. Enjoying me struggle with React is what you're doing. <laughs> you're watching me freak out. <laughs> freak out over this React code. This is so overwhelming. Oh my gosh. I just see a topic. Look at this topic. What was I just saying about changing how you have to the way you think? Look at this. They say it right here. Thinking in React. This is, this is exactly what I just said. You have to change the way you think. They have a whole topic on it. You know, they should probably start with that. I'm just going to say, you should probably start with this uh, before you get into all the code. Oh my gosh. Okay, what are they talking about here? Zulex, well... I'll say that I'm glad you did this so that I could get an idea of what it looks like to code and react. Yeah, you're welcome. Watch me go through the pain so you don't have to. <laughs> and like, I'm still confused on how to get from one page to another because as was pointed out earlier, React has no navigation built in. So I guess that technically makes it a spa, right? Is React a spa, a single page application framework? Like, how do you navigate around? Like, I don't know. There's no topic on navigation. Okay, so we recommend such components, special children to pass children elements directly into their input. Class name. Oh, wow, dynamic class names, okay. Welcome dialogue, class dialogue, dialogue message. Kevin, I learned React basically by Googling. I know how to do X in Angular. How do I do that in React? <laughs> okay. 
I think I'm gonna skip this stuff because it's just freaking me out even more. I'm gonna go to hooks. Because this was the this was the new thing that I needed to know. And you know what? I'm deleting this form because this is just nasty for a form with like two elements on it. Let's get Let's re-enable my whoops. My code here. This one. That one right there. Let's re let's do that one. Okay. So hooks are a new addition. It's the new hotness. They let you use state and other React features without writing a class. Yes, this is what we want to accomplish right here. Sick mofo. If React already annoys you, you definitely won't like hooks. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. Oh my god. Woo. Okay, well, it looks like import React and use okay, we need to import up here. Can we do this? Uh, what is it? Use state. Okay. Look at the FAQ. Uh, I don't know if I should do this. Okay, I'm gonna look at the FAQ. Okay. That's a lot of FAQs. There are no plans to remove classes. Okay, let me let me just don't scare me off right away. <laughs> Is there a WTF? Was I thinking topic in the FAQ? Yeah, let's look. Is there a WTF down here? Uh, what W? Actually, I think I think there is a WTF section right here. There it is. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. We can make that a little better, can't we? We make that a little better. We make that a little better. Uh, hooks. Dot dot dot. What the F? <laughs> Official React documentation. It's right there on the website. Look, right there. ReactJS.org. Hooks. WTF. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. So I added my I added my import, use state, use state. Declare a state variable, which we'll call count. But I see. Con wait. That doesn't look like. Okay, it's a little. Oh, sorry, you don't get the FAQ. The rules of hooks is will that bother you? <laughs> oh my lord. Uh, const. Why do I have a set count in here too? Oh no, don't tell me. Okay, let's. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna copy this. And can I just, I'll add this at the top, right? I'll add that at the top. On okay, so you clicked blank times. Set count, count. Oh, so this set count is that set count. That. And this property is. Okay, let's save this. <clears throat> uh, can't do that. What do we create element is not defined? App render. Why did I break? How is that not working? Hold on. Oh, really? Ah. Uh, like that. 
Okay. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Kind of. I'm uh here, I'm gonna delete this actually. Uh this is a new function, you state. It's the first hook. <clears throat> okay. It's just a teaser. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense yet. Oh, so you're not going to explain it? No plans. Don't Hooks don't replace your knowledge of React concepts. I have no knowledge of React concepts, so that's good. Prop state, context, refs, and lifecycle. Okay, I'm going to jump to the next page. State hook. This example renders a counter. When you click the button, it increments the value. Okay, we did that. Here, use state is a hook. Uh, we call it inside a function component to add some local state to it. React will preserve this state between re-renders. Use state returns a pair, the current state value, and a function that lets you up. So that's what that is. This is the function that lets you update this property of the state. So you call this function an you know, event handler somewhere else. It's similar to this.state in a class, except it doesn't merge the old and new state together. Okay. The only argument to use state is the initial state. <clears throat> in the example above, it's zero. Doesn't have to be an object. Okay. Declaring multiple state variables. Oh, okay. So you have, so using the use state, you would create this array, which has the first one is the property name. The second one is a function that will be used to set that property. Okay. But what is a hook? Hooks are functions that let you hook into React state and lifecycle features. Hooks don't work inside classes. Okay. I don't know. I, I might prefer a class now, actually. No, I haven't done any data fetching yet because you don't have a topic on data fetching. Unless it's under advanced concepts. I don't see anything about data fetching. Nope. So I'm still under hooks then. Use effect. The effect hook use effect adds ability to perform side effects from a function component. It serves the same purpose as component did mount, component did update. Okay, I don't know what these are. <laughs> Use effect. Okay, let's try this. Let's click on that. Copy paste. Kevin, React doesn't. Ajax, Ajax built it. So you're on your own. Oh, wonderful. So just by declaring use effect, we're hooking into the life cycle of react and it's just going to magically work. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, oh, of course. Now it should work, right? Here we are. Yeah, there it is right there. Well, that's kind of cool. I like Kevin likes Axios. Axios. What's Axios? Help, Hawkeye. Thanks for the follow. What is Axios? Uh, I don't think that's it. This looks like a political thing. Is this it? No, that's not it either. What's Axios? <laughs> I don't know. 
Share a link if you don't mind, Kevin. I don't know what that is. Okay. So we were able to hook into that by using this use effect and we can update our document title. That was pretty easy. That's kind of nice. Fab.env? How do you say that? Fab.env? Environment? Uh, put count as the second argument and use effect to only update when count changes. Second argument and use effect? AGR, side note. Not having link protection on the stream is dangerous. Oh, well, I like to live on the edge, my friend. Oh, this. Okay, this. Axios on the GitHub. Promise-based HTTP client for browser for browser and Node.js. For the browser and Node.js. I almost thought that said Bowser. <laughs> God. See what React code has done to me? I can't even read straight. Supports all. Hey, they even got the updated Edgium icon. These dudes are fast. Look at that. NPM install. Okay. See, they make it easy to use. I'll have to check that out later. Maybe that's jumping ahead. Maybe you should wait. Uh, but now use effect is updating the title regardless of whether or not the count. Oh, got you. So would the count go here? But I would have to test this by not setting the count. Right? Clicked undefined times. It's not undefined. I have I have a zero. The get get. Oh, uh, line 13 here, like that? Man, that syntax is weird. So if I don't, why, how can I tell if it's changing or not? Okay, but I got it right. Dependencies, read only any. If present, effect will only activate if the values in the list change. Okay, so this is an array and I could put more values or more properties in there. Got it. Like, you know, val one, val two, whatever these values are. If any of those update, then it will invoke the code inside of use effect. Okay. Kind of like I notify property changed a little bit. <laughs> and it's triggered if all the values changed. Got it. And an empty array will only run on the first render. Oh, okay. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, so that works. That's cool. That's not too bad. It's not too scary, right? You're telling React to run your effect function after flushing changes to the DOM. Effects are declared inside the component so they have access to its props and state. By default, React runs the effects after every render, including the first render. Okay. Uh, effects may also specify how to clean up after them, returning a function. Use effect. Chat API subscribe to friend status handle status changed. But I'm sorry, my eyes like it's twitching. My I don't know if you can see this. My eyes like twitching trying to read this code. <laughs> like oh my eyes, <laughs> like oh my gosh. You got function. Then an, is that a is this function inside another function? No, is it? Yeah, wait, 
we have this function. We have that function. But we have a... Oh, wait, but we had this... That, that... Oh, my gosh. No. This here. Right? Oh, my gosh. JavaScript number one. No kidding. This code is so hard to read. <clears throat> I get what it's saying, though. I think I get what it's saying. Use effect. So we're subscribing. Return. What are we returning? We're not returning anything here. Returning another... But there's no comma. So I, I'm not adding another argument, am I? This is the end of use effect. Fab.env. I'm just call you fab. <laughs> fab return runs when the component gets unmounted. HDR, you get what it says. You just don't want it. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. Okay, so I guess return is the magic word. This will only ret return or be invoked when the component gets unmounted. Otherwise, this, this line of code will not run. Right? That's what I'm that's what I'm getting from Fab. Yeah, React would unsubscribe for our chat API when the component unmounts. Exactly what you just said, Fab. As well as before rerunning the effect due to a subsequent render. Oh my gosh. Like literally my eye was just like <laughs> twitching. I got a question for all the React developers online right now. Do you really enjoy this? Like, like when people say, you know, oh, what, what framework do you use? Like, oh man, I, I do React. I love it. It's amazing. Sick Mofo was definitely all in on React. So is Fab. Fab is all in on React. Okay, so let's up. Okay, so we're going to do this. Use effect. We updated the title. Is online set is online. Okay, I don't have a chat, chat API, so I can't copy and paste that code. But it looks like I can use more than one effect. So that's kind of cool. It's almost like you're subscribing to an event using some type of pub sub mechanism, right? It's almost kind of like that. Uh, Sick mofo. I wrote something in view the other day and loved it. Ooh. Ooh. Kevin. Another positive for view. Maybe I need to be looking at view instead of react. <clears throat> and then handle status change. Set is online. That's this here. Okay, I got it. First line is what's going to happen when the effect invokes. The return statement basically says, this is our cleanup code. So anything inside this return, clean up, we're done. Got it. Fab, well usually you use, use effect to subscribe to state changes. Yeah, that way you can respond to something happening, right? Okay. Rules of hooks. Here we go, rules. Hooks are JavaScript functions, but they impose two additional rules. Only call hooks at the top level. Don't call hooks inside loops, conditions, or nested functions. Ooh, okay. Well, yeah, because this is like a global registration, if you will, right? So you want it at the top level of your component. Only call hooks from React function components. Don't call hooks from regular JavaScript functions. There's just one other valid place to call hooks, your own custom hooks. Okay, I'm not doing that, that's for sure. No freaking way am I trying to go down that path anytime soon. So my question is, is how can React know the difference between a JavaScript function and a React component function? Because they're the same, really. Is it just based on what it returns? If it returns HTML, is it declared a React component? Or 
or what? Or does it have to have props and now it's a React component? Like, I don't know. What? How do I know how it tells the difference between a normal function? Like, I don't know. Uh, Fab thinks it's just the presence of props. But what if I don't have props? Right? Like, I could just have something like this. You know, let me copy this. I can do something like that. And there we go. And Fab's like, any function can return JSX. Okay. Let me put that back. Okay, using the state hook. Okay, we kind of, we, we're using the state hook right here. We're using it. And I do remember using the component class on Tuesday. I actually kind of understood that. That made more sense to me, uh, only because it was so similar to Flutter. Because you know Flutter has a build method and it has its own. Uh, no, what is it? Is it widget? I think it's widget. It's been a while since I've been in Flutter. And then calling set state. I think that's. I think that's what it's called in Flutter too. Actually, set state maybe. I don't remember. So this really reminded me of Flutter, but this this new flavor definitely does not remind me of anything. As a reminder, function components in React look like this. <clears throat> okay. Or this. Yeah, this is what I'm doing here. This is what I'm doing. I like this syntax because it makes sense to me. You have, might have previously known these as stateless components. We're now introducing the ability to use React State. Okay. Hooks don't work inside classes. Got it. We did that. What is a hook? A special function lets you hook into React features. Yep, we got that. We know when to use it. Okay, now declaring one. We understand that too, right? We understand that we create our little const here. We have an array. The first item in that array is our property or variable, sorry. They call it variable in JavaScript, apparently. I come from C-sharp, so I call it a property, but variable, it's fine. Uh, and then our method, wait, sorry, not method, function. <laughs> uh, the function set count will actually set the value of our count variable. Got it. And then when you call set count, it forces the re render of the component. That's what I get. This is what I've gotten so far. Uh, what do we pass to use state as an argument? Fab, thank you. I'm correct. Yes. Okay. It's coming slow, but it's coming, right? It's getting there. Uh, okay, state doesn't have to be an object. Yep, I know that. So if we want to store two different states, we have to call that twice. I totally understand that. So for example, I could do this. Right? That creates another variable called is logged in. And if I wanted to set that property, I would do it via the set is logged in function. That's just magically a function. Scratter, the question is, why should we use function components instead of classes? That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe, I'm just assuming, maybe a, a function component is lighter weight because you're not having to extend a react.component class, which has a lot of infrastructure to it, right? Uh, 
But Fab says classes are nicer, honestly. And I can see, at least structurally, I can see how that would be a true statement. Because I played with the classes on Tuesday, and I felt comfortable in there. I do not feel comfortable in the function approach, front function only. But then again, this is my very first React experience, so. Okay, so what does use state return? Return to a pair of values, the current state, and a function that updates it. That's why we write const. Co okay, yep. Right? That would make more sense. <clears throat> for kink. For, for Kakamania? For Kakamani? Kakamani? Kamani? I'm sorry, I butchered that name. State versus stateless. True. So the, the, the component approach, the class approach, has state, right? Uh, but foreplay says state versus stateless is not an accurate description. Functional components could be stateful when using hooks. Yes, and that's what we're using right now. We're, we're learning about hooks right now. This state hook. So we have state in our app function right here. We have state. So this is the function that sets this variable. Got it. And so when we equal set state, we provide the default value it looks like. Yes, because React will remember its current value between re-renders and provide the most recent one to our function. If we want to update the current count, we call set count, which is exactly what we're doing right here, right there. Before hooks, class-based component for state and function-based component without state. For con, I can see that. Because functions didn't have state before hooks. That makes complete sense. But now the rules have changed, right? Because now we have state. You might be wondering why it's use state and not name create state. Naming things is hard. That's why it's called use state. Create wouldn't be quite accurate. Because state is only created the first time our component renders. During the next render, use state gives us the current state. Otherwise, it wouldn't be state at all. <laughs> yeah, naming things is hard. Well, this is kind of, yeah, so reading the state is definitely easier because on the class-based approach, we had to say this dot state dot property or variable name. Uh, and here we just use the variable name directly, which is nice. That's nice. That's nicer. Just a little bit less typing, right? Though if you're doing React, you don't care about how much you type. You love typing. You love writing tons and tons and tons of code. Uh, for play, the great thing about hooks is the ability to write reasonable stateful logic with ease. You know what also makes that really easy? Services that you can use via dependency injection. <laughs> anyone say Blazor? Or anyone say Angular? Can you even do dependency injection in? Well, I guess that would be a normal JavaScript thing. Like you would, there's no infrastructure for that in React. There's no navigation. There's no dependency injection. Uh, Kevin, Blazor is totally a fad. <laughs> do you think it's destined to the fate of things like, I don't know, say Silverlight? Okay, cool. So recap. Okay, so hooks wasn't that bad. If, if that's all hooks are, it's really not that bad, actually. Sick mofo, you kind of scared me, but it's it's really not that bad. Unless it just gets harder. <laughs> Unless it's just the really simple stuff, right? Yeah, sick mofo, the server side rendering thing is bonkers. I don't understand why anyone would use that. Delay on every user interaction. 
And Kevin uh, thinks it's only useful for PWAs. Progressive web apps. Now the client side blazer running offline, things like that, right? Uh, that's that's gonna be cool. Sick mofo, look at the rules of hooks. Those can be tricky when you're getting started. Oh, I don't. Oh, we're getting there actually. I think I'm at the end of this topic. Oh, there it is, rules of hooks. Now you okay. <clears throat> I wouldn't use Blazer for my internet facing. No, no, I would not use Blazer for any public facing website myself, actually. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, actually, they even wrote a blog post about their performance and where it starts breaking down. And if you can guarantee a very high bandwidth and a what's it a low latency connection like you have a, a great connection then you're you're safe if you don't uh, yeah you might have some issues so if you have an internal application it might be good right sick mofo so basically build nothing useful with it is what you're saying yeah and right now it's so early right now even for product like even for an internal app I wouldn't personally use it. It's got its own issues. It's got potential though. It definitely has potential. But it's not proven, right? It's not a proven technology that you should be writing mission critical applications with for, by any means. Hell no. I wouldn't do that. Kevin, if I wanted to build an installable app, a la Ionic, or similar, then I like it. I played with Ionic once, it was pretty cool. I was hoping I would really like React, but it's really not uh, not my thing so far. But at least I'll be able to look at a React code base and kind of get what they're doing, right? All right, so what do square brackets mean? You might have noticed the square brackets, declare state variable. Yeah, I thought it was an array. I thought this was an array because of the brackets. Okay. Array destructuring oh so it is kind of an array right we're making two new variables fruit and set fruit where fruit is the first value returned by use state and set fruit is the second oh got it yep i totally get that that makes sense Ugh. yeah sick mofo it is an array because use state returns a tuple So when we declare a state, yeah, okay, I totally understand how this is working now. That makes complete sense. Uh, this makes sense to me. Oh, oh, what's this? What is this right here? Multiple state variables. Declaring state variables as a pair, something set something, is also handy because it lets us give different names to different state variables if we want to use more than one. Got it. Age, fruit, and to-dos. What, what is this though? Oh, that's the default value. That's the default value. Never mind. I got it. So this to do's must be an object of some type, right? And then it has a text property on it or a variable. I don't know what you would call that in JavaScript. I call them properties. I'm gonna call them properties. And then so you're setting the text property on the to do object initially to learn hooks right you don't have to use many state variables state variables can hold objects and arrays just fine yep i think that's what they're doing right here that's holding an object okay so using this dot state in a class updating a state variable always replaces it instead of merging it Oh, wow. Okay. You know what? I'm going to just take a peek at this rules of hooks. Just real quick. Only call hooks at the top level. Okay, I remember that one. That's not so bad. That's not so bad there, sick mofo. Only call hooks from React functions. Okay, not. I'm not scared yet. Yes, lint plugin. Okay, so it's a plugin to help you get this right. That's not bad. Uh, OK, 
Okay. How does React know? React relies on the order in which the hooks are called. Oh, so you have a order of operations. Use state, use effect, use state, use effect. Second render, use state, use effect. Mary Poppins. Update title, replace the effect for updating. <clears throat> oh, now I see what you're talking about, sick mofo. I'm getting into it now. The no conditional calls is usually what gets everyone. Even this right here, making sure you're calling them in the right order because it replaces the effect for updating the title. As long as the order of the hook calls is the same between renders, React can associate the same local state with each of them. Okay, now I can see where things start getting confusing. And you're like, why isn't this working? Kind of like my if statement. Why wouldn't my if statement work? Oh, there's no if statement. All right. I'm definitely not going to build my own hooks. Forget that. You know what? I'm calling it a day. <laughs> I think... Dan, wait. You are now only figuring out this is confusing. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's it's confusing. And I think the bigger the code base, or the bigger the file, right? The harder it's going to be to read and the harder it's going to be to follow and understand. I mean, if you're experienced and it's your job and you're using it all the time, I'm sure you get used to the pain. It's no longer pain. And it's just, you know it. You know it. You're used to it, right? Uh... But from my perspective, I think it's good I took these two days to at least jump into it, create my React app, get the very basics in there, right? Uh, and just be somewhat knowledgeable. That way, if I'm talking to a customer, or I'm talking to somebody and they're using React, I can kind of be involved in the conversation now. Uh, Games Make, how you doing? Thanks for joining, my friend. We are just about to wrap up, though. <laughs> you missed the struggle. The struggle was real. Yeah. I was... We were writing some reacts from scratch today, and it was not pretty at all. But it's only because I'm not a React artist. Like, sick mofo. I'm sure you can write some beautiful React code, my friend. I am positive you can. I'm sure you were watching me write this and you're like, oh, oh my gosh. What are you doing, Brian? Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I'm a little more knowledgeable than I was last week, right? That's what we do. We have to learn. We're always learning. We're constantly learning. And yeah, sick mofo. Terrible at it first, so you know what it's like st starting out. Yeah. And I wish there was, like, more tooling. Things like this almost make me wish, like, maybe I should write my own CLI for it to make it a little easier. But then you start thinking about that, and you're like, well, it's so, like, loosey-goosey. You can really do whatever you wanted. There's no, there's no patterns, right? So on the desktop, we have all kinds of patterns that we can utilize to write decoupled, structured, testable, maintainable code. Uh, a popular one is like MVVM. You have MVC, MVP. Uh, you have the commanding pattern, event aggregation pattern, uh, composition pattern, decorator patterns. I mean, there's all kinds of patterns. But in, in React land, you don't have that. So there's no like real structure to it, right? Yes, yeah, it's the it's the Wild West that everyone mixes and matches libraries. Based on not only your, your gut feeling, right? But maybe just your experience in general, how you've written you've always written your apps. You'll hopefully you write them the same way, but you're not gonna write them the same way as someone else. There's no established pattern to use. Right? Yeah, the that's the beauty and the curse of React. 
same problems could be solved in many ways. Right, I think that's why, like, for example, so today I just looked up the total downloads of Prism across uh, WPF and Xamarin Forms uh, over all the packages, right? Since it was first uploaded in Nougat. Get this, over 8 million downloads of Prism since its first release across all packages. That's crazy. That's insane. But it shows you the importance of having a framework that helps guide you to a path of success. Right? <laughs> That's around the React downloads per week. <laughs> well, keep in mind, there's a lot more web developers than there are probably WPF developers, right? Uh, especially all the new devs coming out. They're not learning WPF. They're not learning Xamarin. They're learning web technologies. Uh, but still, there's something to be said about having a framework or having something in place to where you're writing apps the same way every time you're successful, they're testable, maintainable, decoupled, all this great stuff. And someone else can co come into your code base and just be productive, right? I don't see that happening with React, honestly. Granted, I have not been exposed to a ton of React apps, granted, right? Uh, so my, my opinion is just based off assumptions on my experience uh, during these streams. Yeah. Sitting in our solid gold rocker chairs. <laughs> yeah, so all the code, yes, I see Angular and React a lot. And not just code camps, Dan, not just code camps, all events, like every event I go to, you'll have a React boot camp, an Angular boot camp. Those are like super popular. Now, what I like about Angular is that it's structured, right? Now, it's node modules folder freaks me out too. I mean, it's like, I forgot how many hundreds of megabytes large. Uh, but everything I need for a spa is there. And all the dependency injection, all the navigation, handling parameters, services, like everything. It's just there and it works. That's what I like about it. And for play, there are design patterns to React that can be used to solve problems in ways that other React developers understand. But are those used? Right? Do people actually use those patterns? Are they established patterns? Is it like something like everyone knows MVVM? And if you're doing XAML, they're doing MVVM. It's the standard. Like, hands down, it's the standard. Uh, Angular and Vue have the same amount of weekly downloads. About a fifth of React. Yeah, see, I... I don't understand why React is so popular. It's such a pain for me. It's such a pain. The code is so hard to read. Uh, but maybe, maybe it's easier to style. Uh, I would say it doesn't have any dependencies, but that's not true. Because I look at these node modules and it obviously has dependencies. Uh, plus, React itself is a dependency, right? So, it's a lot of work. There's a lot to understand. So, I'm, I'm still not convinced or I... I don't know why React is so popular nowadays. I don't know if it's just like the cool kid on the block, you know, the new kid, the new framework, the newest framework. I don't know what it is. Poopstop.com. React really only deals with UI. Everything else is up to developer to implement. So you get different solutions from different developers. That's kind of what I'm getting at. And I, even in these streams, I haven't gotten to the data. Like the data is like the most important part. So that means I'm relying on just pure JavaScript to bring in my data, right? I mean, that's kind of all it is. It's like Scala and Finagle? Finagle? I've heard of Scala, actually. I don't, I've never heard of Finagle, though. <laughs> People start using it because of Twitter. <laughs> 
Yeah, and you know what? The funny thing is, so I was at FinJS uh, a couple weeks ago. I was speaking at FinJS in New York City, and I asked this person, I'm like, uh, you know, what, what do you use? What, what, what's your framework of choice? And like, React. Oh, I love React. I said, well, why? And then I could see it, the switch in, in her eyes. Like, oh, crap. I have to actually think about why I like it so much. And while she would explain a little bit, I don't, I don't feel that she really understood why she liked it so much. Like she, you know, like she couldn't express it anyways. <laughs> a cry for help, <laughs> distress. Uh, yeah, and sick mofo, you may be right. Maybe because of the popularity, because of React and Instagram use it, right? Or not React, sorry. <laughs> Facebook and Instagram use React, right? Uh. But, but you know, when, when you talk to someone, you can feel their energy change. And the moment they had to, you know, ex try to come up with reasons. She, she was digging, trying to come up with reasons why React was better than something else. I'm like, so I said, so what would be better than, you know, React over, say, Angular? Like, why do you choose that? And... Really what came out of it was she felt like she wasn't locked in to a framework, right? She's not boxed in. That was the big, the big takeaway. And I left it at that. Like, oh, okay, good to know. But is it React a framework? You're boxed into the React framework. You're, rel you're relying on everything React provides you or doesn't like navigation. So you still have to find out you know, you still have to solve those problems. AGR. It's when you ask a cult member why they subscribe to the benefits of the cult or beliefs of the cult. Yeah. Don't think it's really, it's a more of a UI library. React literally is not a framework. What would you call it then? If it's not a framework. Hold on. I'm pretty sure it's a framework. I, it's a JavaScript framework. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to go back. I think it's, it's a framework. Like, for example, we'll say framework versus library. Because these are different. Library code is always called by code that you write while a framework always calls code that you write. It's a framework, especially with the hooks and all that. It's calling code that you write. And, and, uh, da, 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 react, reactjs.org. I think itself, itself called it, oh, it, it called itself a library. But I do not agree with that assessment. Just has most support of all the options. Uh, in the traditional sense, you can use this to build an entire application. It's not a framework, though. I disagree. I disagree. I would definitely call it a framework. So let's look at the key difference between a library and a framework. Yeah, so the key difference between a library and a framework is inversion of control. When you call a method from a library, you are in control. But with a framework, the control is inverted. The framework calls you. Just one example. Hooks. Hooks is definitely a framework thing. Right? It It's calling us. So, yes. This is definitely, because I write this code and it's going to call me. It's going to call my code. And then there's life cycle. I haven't gotten to the life cycle yet. Right? Yeah. I, I think it's a framework. Now, it may be a UI framework, but it's still a framework. That's just semantics. Right. It's a UI framework. 
However, it's still something you're buying into. Sure, it's not a framework in the sense of it structures your entire application out for you, right? It basically gives you a rope to hang yourself with. I hanged myself a couple times. Uh, so React is, yeah, here's this noose. Take this. Uh, good luck. But I'm going to give you all these APIs you can use to build your UI. I'm not going to do anything else for you, but you will be able to build the UI. And I'm not experienced enough yet to know what the benefit of using React to build my I, my UI versus Vue, right? So I need to learn Vue because if they're both UI libraries slash frameworks, uh, maybe I could form a more solid opinion because my experience with React is so limited. I don't think my opinion carries much weight right now because it's so limited but it's still fun to talk about isn't it guys isn't it everyone it's still fun what we do is fun i love it you went from angular 1.5 to react if i remember correctly i just got started in, in angular just at the beginning of the year uh so i was lucky enough to get started late enough to where it had all the cool features in it I heard the early versions of Angular were quite painful. And even migrating from an earlier version to now, people don't even do it because it's so different. Viable clan member. I'm not clicking on that. I don't know what that, that link is. <laughs> Maybe I should put in some link protection there. <laughs> Oh, it's felt. Yeah, sc Scratcher. If I had to build a product, I'd use Angular hands down. Return to dust. Yeah, I'll check it out. Man, but at what point do we just say stop with the new frameworks? Like, this is getting pretty crazy. Like, there's a new framework. I feel like every day. Is it there? Like, I, I just feel like what happened to the good old days where you could write an app and that app lives for like a decade, 20 years without ever having to touch it. It just works. Right? Do you remember those days? But now it's this new thing, that new thing. Got to use this. Oh, nope. That's not good. jQuery is the best thing ever. You got to use. No, jQuery sucks. But yesterday you just said jQuery was like, nope, nope. Today it sucks. Don't ever use it. I will never write jQuery again. Right? It's like. Oh my God, Aurelia, uh, Aurelia. That was like, I remember that having momentum, but I don't know what happened to it, right? So did that die off? I don't know. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> JavaScript kitties took over. No. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Being a desktop dev, I, I've, I'm spoiled with somewhat stable technology. Right, we don't get a ton of new frameworks or libraries that come out, uh, so we can just focus on providing value to our, our our end users and to our customers. But nowadays, I don't. I could never be a web developer. I couldn't do it. I would go into management before <laughs> I became a web developer. <laughs> like, nope, I'm a dev manager now. <laughs> oh yes, Backbone, Knockout, Ember. Hot towel. Uh, There's all kinds. Not yeah, knockout. What was it? There was something else too. <laughs> no one uses that garbage. <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds of freaking things out there. Actually, I have a slide. I have a slide for... Uh, I did a talk at an event about moving desktop to web and my experience of learning where was that uh da, da, da. nope that's not there i think oh yeah so let me uh let me go to my desktop here so this was just an example of of my slide 
where I talked about my learning experience. Yeah, you got HTML. Yeah, no problem. Uh, JavaScript, Bootstrap, CSS, Node, Backbone, Ember, right? NPM, Bower. Don't forget Bower. That's the one I was thinking about. Bower, Knockout, React, ASP.NET. You got jQuery, Blazor, TypeScript, Hot Towel, Angular, Vue. Like, oh my God. Like, that was crazy. And that's just a little, that's like a hair. That's just a little sliver of what you have to jump through. That's not talking about any of the webpack, right? None of the build tools, Jenkins, like there's none of that stuff in there. That's just basic writing a web page, right? Like, oh, it's nuts. You web developers are crazy, crazy. Oh, Bower is no good now. Yarn, webpack, parcel. See what I'm talking about? I need to add that to that slide deck. Yarn, Webpack, Parcel. I need a, uh, there's also what? There's Ionic. That's another uh, PWA type tool. Is that, would it, is that a framework, would you say? Or would you, more like a tool? I don't know. I don't even know what to call it. Saw some coding in HTML, CSS directly like a psychopath. <laughs> Gulp. That's another one. Gulp. We could go on and on and on about this. It's so funny what we've gotten ourselves into, right? Like, grunt. Oh, what did we do to ourselves? And now we have, I mean, I can't even keep up anymore. I don't know about you. I can't keep up. I'm trying to keep up. It's just hard. Am I just getting too old for this? Maybe I'm just getting too old for this. Stick. Desktop devs were nearly duped into WPF. Ah, no, WPF was awesome. It's still awesome. And it's got some performance problems I wish they'd fix. Uh, but from a uh, developer standpoint, productivity standpoint, so much better. So much better. Yes. Now with Create React app, it is easier. However, I need to figure out how to create a React app with TypeScript. I got to get away from this JavaScript crap. Like this job, no way. No, no more JavaScript for me. I need to be in TypeScript because at least coming from C Sharp, I might feel more comfortable uh, in React if I was in if I was in TypeScript. That might make me feel more comfortable, right? Yeah, Kevin, I'm with you, man. I still love WPF. And Vue CLI has built-in TypeScript support. Just saying. Okay, next week. Next week it's Vue. We are going to play with you next week. It's made up. My, made my mind up. Thanks, thanks, Kevin. I got my topic for next week. <laughs> SSR? No, I don't want to know about SSR. What is SSR? Is that like a new framework or something? Another one? Oh, server-side rendering. Yeah, yeah, server-side rendering. We were just talking about how Blazor does server-side rendering. Got it. Yeah, we'll see about the Blazor thing. We'll see. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, can you... The whole server-side thing, rendering, is just weird to me. I mean, you have a client. Take advantage of the client. I'm just saying. I'm sure there's some benefits to server-side rendering, but uh, I would rather take a, take advantage of as much client processing as I possibly could, right? But, well, everyone, thank you very much for joining me today, and thank you for helping me with React and um, fixing my errors and all that. I've I've learned a lot from you all. I really appreciate your help and sticking sticking through it with me. I really appreciate it. Next week, because of Kevin, we are going to learn Vue. I'm going to create a file new Vue, and I'm going to see how hard it is for a guy like me, hardcore desktop guy, uh, to learn Vue and pick up Vue. So far, I still like Angular. Still, So far, Angular came the easiest to me. Uh, so let's see what Vue does on Tuesday. Yeah, slow mobiles. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. And I will see you next time. Have a good one.